Family History Channel. My name is Kennedy Harvey. And my name is Lamont McKinney. And today we're here at the Tallahassee Capitol Building where 150 years of history was staged. This, this building has witnessed wars, political and cultural upheaval, and rapid economic expansion. And we will also talk about African Americans' contribution to this establishment. So let's head inside and get started. Shall we? As you first walk in, there is a grand staircase that was added by architect Frank Milburn in 1902 in order to impress first-time visitors. And I must say, I am impressed. Indeed. Before the capital was established, the government met in simple law cabinets. As Florida approached statehood, the need for a larger government grew. The core of the Tallahassee Capitol, also known as the Old Capitol, was built in 1845. Wait, do you know why Tallahassee is even the capital? I can't say I do. Well, before the Tallahassee was chosen as the capital on March 4th, 1824, Florida had two separate capitals, St. Augustine and Pensacola. Legislators had to travel over 400 miles to handle political business. That trip became such a burden, so they chose the halfway point of Tallahassee. Oh, okay, because I, I can't really imagine traveling 400 miles every single time there is an issue. Yeah, me neither. Let's take a look at one of the rooms. I would love to. Inside the museum, there are dozens of rooms that showcase important Tallahassee history. Many of these rooms still have original artwork or furniture. One room in particular, room 111, the stenographer's office, is almost completely original. In the stenographer's office, the entire government staff would convene and handle their business in his room here. But didn't we say we were going to talk about slave influence? Yes, we did. Well, allow me. As we mentioned before, the core of the building was built in 1845, 20 years before the official end of slavery. There's little documentation of enslaved African Americans building the capital. But as we all know, it was very likely that slaves had a role in the building due to how much they contributed to the state of Florida as a whole. At the time, Florida was on the verge of becoming the 27th state and slaves were responsible for all conceivable work. This would include the construction of the old capital. The main reason for the lack of documentation is because it was up to the slave owners to disclose, which was not done often. The supervising architect of the 1845 capital, Richard A. Shine and his son were known slave owners and auctioneers. They, like most residents, were deeply investing in slavery. So it is as safe to say that Shine took advantage of the free labor that he owned. Wow. Recently in 2018, Democratic Representative Keon McGee gave a passionate speech about the treatment of slaves in Florida. In his speech, he included the claim that slaves were responsible for the building, for building the Capitol, which his team later stated came from a pamphlet called The Old Capitol, the Florida Center of Political History and Governance. Shortly after, it was announced that a slave memorial ground was approved to be exhibited at the Capitol. This exhibition will highlight how much enslaved people contributed to Florida and hopefully inspire others to dig deeper into the history of African-American slaves that were not documented. That's wonderful, but not for the slaves, but the fact that they're getting the recognition they deserve. Yeah, and we wouldn't want the internet coming after us. You're right. Before we close this week's episode of Family History Channel, we have an interview with the exhibit manager, Michelle Sunset. She will go into further detail about the slaves' contribution to the Capitol. Enjoy. We're currently taking an African-American course, and as I was doing my research, I found limited sources that mentioned the help of slaves in building this beautiful building, so can you touch on this topic? Sure. Um, so this is a really timely topic to bring up. Some of the other history institutions in town have been working for over a year now, really trying to get a grasp on the lives of the enslaved people that worked at their sites. Um, specifically, the Grove Museum, Goodwood Plantation, and the Tallahassee Museum actually put together um, what they called the Invisible Lives Tour. And it was kind of a one-day starter event where they gave special tours to show some of the research they've done on these enslaved folks. Um, and I can say that here at the Historic Capitol, we're really interested in finding out more about our own history. Um, we know that one of the workers on this building in the 1840s, Richard Shine, was a slave owner, and he was involved in making bricks. 
and he was also involved in the brick making over at the Grove. And so while we don't have formal documentation that kind of lists who was working on this project under him, we know he was a slave owner, and so we're kind of able to extrapolate pretty confidently mm -hmm. that there would have been slaves mm -hmm. working for him, creating the bricks for this building. Um, and the Grove Museum, like I said, has been doing a lot of research, and as we kind of embark in the next couple of years on a new permanent exhibit about the history of this building, we hope to collaborate with them and sort of work with some of the research they've already done and dig into primary source documents ourselves to try to get more information about who was working here. And, and we do know that in 2018, Florida lawmakers have uh, agreed to begin planning the slave, a slave memorial to be built right in front of the, mm -hmm. the state capitol. Could you elaborate on that with us? And, and could you explain why do you think, what, could you explain what you think uh, sparked the process of, of a slave memorial to be built? Sure, um, I can't necessarily speculate on exactly what sparked it just now. But I do know it was Representative McGee who really championed this project. Um, and so I know there's probably interviews with him, or maybe y'all could reach out and mm -hmm. get to talk to him as well to find out why now. Mm -hmm. um, but as a working historian, I can say that throughout kind of human history, people have felt the need to demarcate these big moments in our shared story. Um, if you look across the street, we have the Vietnam War Memorial, um, Washington, D.C., there are tons of monuments and memorials to these big moments. So I can say for myself, it's just, it's really never too late to kind of mark these big moments. And, and do you think, oh, like, well, I guess that answered my question that it wasn't, it's never too late to uh, commemorate the, the fallen slaves who, you know, helped not only build this state capital, but build up this country to what we know it is today. It is, it has today, so. Well, Ms. Sun said, um, we just want to express our appreciation of you uh, coming out here and t uh, having an interview with us today. You know, a lot of people may not be aware of certain th of certain things that you mentioned today in your interview. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of the Family History Channel, on behalf of me, Lauren, and Lacey, who's behind the camera. <laughs> we just want to say thank you for everything. Um, uh, you guys have a great weekend. And this is Amal McKinney and Lauren. I'm back with Family, <laughs> <laughs> Family History Channel. <laughs> That's all for this week's episode. Thank you for watching FAMU's History Channel, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye! Bye.